Some believe that Bumblebee was originally seen during World War II playing with the son of Ferdinand Porsche. And that Think Small became a great idea after a man who was passionate about bugs said it. Welcome to the back car. Hmm, I don't know. Kefer? Yeah. Coccinelle? We? Oui. Maggiolino? Si? Beetle? Yes, Volkswagen Beetle. So, hello everyone. Welcome to Ghent, Belgium. Today I will show you the 2017 Volkswagen Beetle model. So as usual, we will start with the front part of the car, which looks quite similar to the older new Beetle model, uh, but is more aggressive, I would say, and also 8.8 centimeter wider. So the Volkswagen logo is directly placed on the bonnet, which is unusual um, regarding or comparative with the other Volkswagen model, which uh, the, on the other, the Volkswagen logo is placed directly on the radiator, but this will be a little bit, let's say, inappropriate to put it there because it's too low. Um, so they, they put it directly on, on the bonnet. The um, headlights are, um, are uh, as you know, also on the other models, so they are very similar to the, to the older models. We have here like the um, fog lights and the signal lights, which are placed in this separate area, which is a, a black area. Uh, and don't be confused, this is not metal, this is a plastic. It's like, uh, it's like uh, it makes the impression, it gives you the impression that it's actually like metal, but it's not metal. Um, yeah, so it's pretty, pretty simple. We have here the parking sensors. Here is also plastic. This is a plastic also, good quality plastic, and that's it. The car is also lower, it's 1.2 centimeter lower than the previous model. Yeah, don't be confused. Here uh, is, uh, we have here the engine, so not on the back, <laughs> but uh, I will show you in a separate video the engine. The car comes with a 1.4 TSI, 150 horsepower and uh, 250 newton meter. It's a petrol engine. So now let's move on the um, right side of the car. So we are on the right side of the car. I would start with the mirrors. The mirrors are quite simple, not an amazing design. We have metal here. I guess this is also metal. And I would imagine that they put metal here because this can be a zone of impact where you can, when parking or opening the doors, this can, yeah, get easily scratched. The wheels are or 70 winch. The top is power operated, as you already saw in uh, my previous video, and it's built from canvas or acrylic material. So I guess, but I guess all these um, uh, top for convertible cars nowadays are, are, are built from this kind of material. Uh, yeah, the space that you get inside, it's not, let's say, yeah. <laughs> But I wouldn't, I wouldn't evaluate the space on this kind of car because, yeah, you don't buy this car for having space. Yeah, also a good point to mention, this car, Volkswagen Beetle, came only in, in, in two doors. Uh, we, you, you don't get a four door for, from this car. It's a, where you can get, where you can put petrol, because as I said, we have a 1.4 TSI, 150 horsepower engine, petrol engine. And yeah. This is more or less the, the right side of the car. We will go now in the back and analyze the car from the back. See you there. So we are in the back of the car. Quite simple, right? We have a small spoiler here that has the role of, pro of uh, providing a reduced drag for the car. 
the trunk, the trunk has like 310 liters. I would say quite enough for this kind of car. The issue is that the door access is quite small. Yeah, as you can see, we have already a lot of uh, stuff here, but the space that you get is quite good. I wouldn't complain about that. Um, yeah, this is the logo. The car doesn't have a back camera. It has parking sensors. As you can see also the um, tail lights are a little bit more aggressive comparative with the older new Beetle model. Here the metallic bar, as I told you, is starting from the front of the car and it just go from one side to another. And yeah, nothing more to say. This is it. Okay. Big frameless door as a similarity to a coupe. Well, I personally wouldn't categorize this car as a proper coupe, but rather as a small two-door sedan. On the driver's door panel, you will find the car locking and unlocking buttons together with the conventional mirror controls, including folding and heating. The spaces for storing things on the door spanner are not like the ones in most cars. This is half built and has a belt integrated. On the left side, near the dashboard, you can find the light control buttons and an air circulation vent. The steering wheel is covered in leather. On the left side, we can see the volume and phone buttons. Oh, this is metal here. Nice. And on the right side, dashboard computer buttons are available. We have the sound model, which brings 17 inch Woodstock alloy wheels, special seats cover with sound equalizer pattern, stainless steel paddles, 6.3 inch infotainment display and eight speakers. The dashboard is analog with three gauges, RPM gauge on the left, big speedometer in the center and fuel indication on the right. On the roof, we have the interior lights button and one button used for making the car convertible. The roof is power operated and it takes around 10 seconds to make the car convertible and almost 12 to put it back in place. The top can be open or closed while driving with a speed of maximum 50 km per hour. The quality of the materials from the inside is satisfying as you find in all today's German cars. You will find a lot of plastic and rarely some metal. What is interesting to mention is that unfortunately there is a lot of shiny plastic which will get easily scratched and in time it will look bad. As I said, 6.3 inch infotainment display with partial touch capabilities. There are also physical buttons on both sides for different functions like radio or navigation, but also options to control the car settings. The touch response quite good, even if I would say it is easy to see that the new fully touch capable infotainment available on Golf or Passat is better. After all, this fact is understandable. Below, we have conventional climate control settings. In this version, the car is also equipped with heated seats. Moving further, three more buttons available here. Start and stop button for enabling or disabling the system that stops the engine when the car is stopped and automatically starts it again when leaving. Parking sensors button, front and back sensors available and emergency signal light. The gearbox is a 7-speed DSG gearbox. In short, it has two clutches. One is used for controlling the odd gears and the other one is used for controlling the even gears. This means that in every moment, at any speed, there will be a clutch available. Theoretically, the car is designed to be used by maximum two people. The experience of having this car for a few days showed me that the theory is absolutely right. The car provides the needed space for two people traveling. Of course, other two individuals can sit in the back, but for long distances, this won't be an amazing experience. What is important to mention, I think it is easy to get yourself on the back places in comparison with other cars like Volkswagen Polo or Golf, for example. The access space is bigger. The car doesn't have an electronic parking brake or auto hold function. Instead, it comes with a mechanical parking brake. Small storing places are available not only on the door panel. The front passenger has the possibility to store things in these two small places.
let's recap. We have here a 2017 Beetle, actually the latest Volkswagen Beetle model. The true fact is that the Beetle will only be produced up to the end of July 2019. This is the sound version, which has of course its characteristics, like specific alloy wheels, musical design pattern for the seats cover, 8 speakers and the small sound logo placed on both fenders. So, 1.4 liter TSI petrol engine, straight 4 cylinders, 150 horsepower and 250 newton meters, front wheel drive, 7 speed DSG gearbox with start stop function and parking sensors for 24,400 euros. Going further, I would like to share my thoughts on this car based on four aspects. The first one would be price versus what you get and what are some other options. The second one would be who should buy this car? What is its audience? Next, good things versus bad things. And uh, finally, how was my experience driving it? What are the conclusions? Well, you pay a little bit more than 24,000 euros and you get the latest successor of one of the most popular automobiles ever built. For this money, you get a smaller belt on the door panels, but space is not necessarily an issue, especially for two people. It has almost the newest technology, so you can drive safe, but it's not overcrowded. Everything is balanced in the inside, so you get an impression of easy and pleasant. You will get parking sensors and back camera, but you won't get automatic parking system. Well, not that you will need it. You get cruise control, but not ACC. Because I think this car is not necessarily for driving countless kilometers. Moreover, no matter what version you get, there will always be a mechanical parking brake. Uh, are the nostalgic times of the 80s Beatles still here? Hmm. Or they didn't put it in because of cost consideration. Well, for 23,000 euros, you can get a Mazda MX-5 with a manual gearbox and almost the same options available, but definitely better looking. Or you can get a 26,000 euros Mini Cooper convertible with bigger trunk access and no belt on the door panels. Or you can get for almost 20,000 euros the shorter and less powered Fiat 500C. Well. The Mazda MX-5 is a very interesting option, with a lot of personality and nicer to drive, but it's a roadster. It is considered as a bad boy, which is not the case for Volkswagen Beetle. The Beetle is more... hmm... bohemian. The Fiat 500C, which is smaller, less powered and not so fully equipped, is nicer on the exterior, but the interior is boring. The Mini Cooper is indeed a famous competitor for the Beetle. Both have a lot of history behind, both share the same ideas on how cars should look like. Anyway, what would you choose? Beetle is one of the most sold cars ever, with more than 20 million units sold over more than 80 years of tradition. I would be very tempted to say that only two enthusiastic and bohemian people, no matter the age, would use this car, but not for long journeys, not for simple conventional day-to-day -day activities, but rather for much more than that. I would say this car would be rented to drive along the sea coast, but not in Santo Domingo or Monaco, because for them a Bentley Continental GT would be more appropriate. You know, I think somebody in a not so expensive suit going on a sunny spring Sunday to an old painting exhibition would drive a beetle. Or somebody who prefers dancing courses to gym would, will most probably drive a beetle. Or somebody who loves beetles music rather than rolling stones would definitely drive a beetle. Now, good things versus bad things. As I already said, I used this car during our journey from Germany to Belgium, so beyond 1000 kilometers. The only positive thing is the feeling you get driving it. You somehow feel the past and present being combined and you enjoy both of them. When you get in it, you start driving it, 
you become calm. But besides that, finding other positive features of this car was quite difficult to me. Functionality doesn't exist. I mean, the trunk access is pretty small, even if you would have quite enough space for things to be placed inside. Then, the average fuel consumption over these 1000 km was around 12 liter per 100 km, which is a lot taking into consideration that I drove the same engine or Volkswagen Golf 7, Passat or Audi A3. More or less the same driving conditions. I assume this is mainly caused by the bad aerodynamic coefficient of the car. The shape doesn't help at all. You get nice design with shiny plastics inside, but this will suffer in time in terms of aspect. Belts on the doors using for storing? Seriously? If you do this, it should at least look great or ingenious. This looks boring and made in a hurry. On a long journey, it becomes uncomfortable to drive. The seats don't look bad, but for me, it was unpleasant to sit for a few hours. That's why I think the purpose of this car is not to be used for long journeys. Let's sum up. Three days, more than 1000 kilometers and a lot of fuel wasted. But we gather experience and drove a car that somehow is connected to the past. The 1980s version was refined to the present design standards. It's a car that will definitely not impress you to the tears, but you will feel something, something new and nice. When somebody will ask you after some time about it, the first thing you will mention will be nostalgia. On the other hand, I was completely disappointed about usability. After all this, I understand the reason for the low sales volume in recent years and moreover the decision of Volkswagen to end the production of the car this summer. But it's a piece of history that deserves to have its place on the book. The great book of automobiles history.